Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter one and continuing ahead with the next tutorial that is the continuation of 1.2, but we are talking about monitoring and control. Now as a part of monitoring and control, we have to really call our learning from the chapter one of the basics in the foundation level. Of course, as a part of foundation during the test process, we understood that monitoring is an activity which basically determines the measurement on the progress of the project. At any point of time, a test manager which generally determines a plan, outlines a schedule, determines a lot of activities to be performed throughout the test process. But at any point of time, if you observe that if they are getting deviated from the plan or things are not happening as expected, or probably that will lead you to not deliver the product on time or meet the expectations as the deadline completes. Then a test manager has to be very much careful that he is prepared for that. Now, a test manager major responsibility at this point of time is to determine the certain set of matrices which will be helpful for the test manager to measure the exact progress at any point of time. Monitoring is definitely to take a look at what's happening now what's going on right now at the product or the progress with the testing life cycle. Because without monitoring, of course, you cannot determine that what kind of control actions would be needed or what kind of action should I take in order to overcome the deviation. So there are a lot of such things which need to be taken care with help of the monitoring process. And of course, without monitoring, you cannot determine what to do. So for a test manager, it is very important to determine the efficient method and selection of great matrices which will help them to evaluate the progress at any point of time on the project progress. All right. So in order for a test manager to provide efficient test control, a test schedule and monitoring frameworks need to be established to enable tracking of test work products and resources against the plan. This framework should include the detailed measures and targets that are needed to relate the status of the test work product and activities to the plan and strategic objectives. Now these strategic objectives basically means that when you want to complete a particular schedule and reach uh, you know, on the deadline with all the completions of the activities. But sometimes for a smaller and less complex projects, it may be relatively easy to relate test work products and activities to the plan. Of course, there are a lot of work products which you have learned in foundation, which are prepared as a part of testing lifecycle, like test cases, test conditions, test procedures, uh, test execution report, execution schedule. Everything must have a good traceability with their respective test bases, which generally helps you to measure how effectively everything is getting executed, what kind of coverage we have achieved so far, and a lot many other factors. So traceability plays a vital role. So for a small and less complex project, it may be relatively easy to relate the work products and activities to the plan and strategic objectives. But generally, more detailed objectives need to be defined to achieve this. And what is that? Of particular importance is the need to relate the status of the work product and activities to the test basis. Now, of course, the test basis could be a requirement. Now, from the requirement, you're deriving a lot of test cases. From the same requirement or the same requirement is being covered as a part of unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and many other levels. Now, how exactly you are achieving the overall coverage of a requirement with help of different levels? Probably the unit testing covers 20% of that. And if you conduct integration, it covers another 20%. So 40% of requirement coverage is achieved. Probably it has some security parameters. It has certain uh, performance parameters and once you conduct them of course you have some better coverages on the requirement so yes until unless you have a good relationship good connectivity between the basis and the work products which you're creating or the activities which are performing as a part of the life cycle then of course the man monitoring will not tell you that how exactly you're progressing so having a good traceability and relationship between these bases and the work products and the activities which are performing will definitely help you to get a stronger monitoring process and based on the stronger you know references and stronger outcomes from every time you measure the monitoring updates you can take necessary control actions with more detailed analysis 
Now, defining targets and measuring progress based on test conditions and group of test conditions can be used as a means to achieve this by relating other test work products to the test basis via test conditions. Of course, the patent thing which is derived from the test basis is the test condition. The very first thing what you derive. And from test conditions, you further break them into the test cases or probably test script. Now, at any point of time, when you're creating a child document or child work product from test conditions, everything must be related directly to the test basis. That is a requirement or anything else. Sometimes the detailed measurements and targets that stakeholders require to be monitored do not relate directly to the system functionality or a specification especially if there is little or no formal documentation. Of course, there are projects when you have poor documentation like Agile. If you're working in Agile, you do not get into the details of all the documentation. So it does become quite challenging for uh, the business representatives or stakeholders to understand what exactly going on. For example, a business stakeholder may be more interested in establishing coverage against an involvement uh, against an operational business cycle even though the specification is defined in terms of system functionality. Involvement of business stakeholder at an early stage in a project can help define these measures and targets which not only can be used to help provide better control during the project but can also be helpful to derive the influence the testing activities throughout the project. Of course, a business a stakeholder can determine all these factors and help you to minimize your efforts towards a better monitoring process. Additionally, uh, you know, definitely we do talk about a lot of other things. For example, you know, stakeholder measures and targets may result in structuring of the test design, test implementation work products, and the test execution schedules to facilitate the accurate monitoring of test progress against these measures. So these targets also help to provide traceability for a specific test level and have the potential to help provide information traceability across different test levels. So of course, now we understand everything put together that not only the work products, of course there are several activities which one or the other way interact with the overall test basis which you have referred and definitely helps you to get a stronger monitoring coverage at any point of time. Further to continue, we are talking about the test control, which is the second part of it. And definitely control actions are basically your guiding or corrective actions, which help you to overcome a deviation from the schedule, which is obviously taken as a result of uh, measurement on the test monitoring part. So monitoring will tell you what's the deviation and control action will be to overcome that deviation. You deploy certain guiding and corrective actions. And test control is not a one-time activity, it's an ongoing activity. Like at any point of time, if you think that something is not happening, which should have happened on a particular day, being a test manager, you deploy a control action. For example, the environment was supposed to be ready by today, but it is not ready. Make sure that it happens tomorrow. You don't, just don't let that crack get bigger in the schedule being, being deviated from the plan. It involves comparing actual progress against the plan and implementing corrective actions when needed. Test control guides the testing to fulfill the mission, strategies, and objectives, including revisiting the test planning activities as needed. Because anytime when you do a lot of modifications, a lot of control actions, you may have updated a lot of things. So of course, make sure that you visit the test plan activities or test plan what you did earlier. It is, you know, maybe required at any point of time to make some updates to that. Appropriate reactions to the control data depend on the detailed planning information as well. So that's another thing that what kind of uh, you know control actions we should be taking in future. For that, we need to update the plan if you have made a lot of changes throughout the life cycle. So from time to time, you're free to update your test plan and tweak the system accordingly or the plan accordingly to meet the upcoming expectations. Because if it is out of date, probably the next control action would be very difficult to be applied in order to make necessary decisions. All right, so that was all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and respond to them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.